Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, DNJ Reads. I'm Danielle, and today I'm bringing you the mid-year freakout tag. So I am super excited to be doing this tag. This is my first time, and I have a ton of books here in front of me that I'm gonna be talking about today. But for these books, a couple of them can be used for multiple questions, but I'm only going to put them in for one question each. This way I have a pretty good range of books to talk to you about today. So I'm just going to jump right on into the tag. And the first question is, what's the best book you've read so far in 2024? So for this question, the book I picked, I feel is going to be pretty divisive for some people. I absolutely loved it, but I know a ton of people did not. And the book I picked for this is House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass. This book is the series finale for the Crescent City series. It is the third book in the series. And Tons of people did not like this one. I had such a great time reading it though. I tabbed it up. There are tons of underlines and highlights that I have in here. And this was just like a really fun time all around. And I laughed, I cried. It, this book was everything I wanted it to be. Yes, I agree with some of what the people are saying that didn't like it, but overall, this was everything I wanted and more. I can't really talk about what happened in this book, but if you don't know, the series follows Bryce Quinlan. She is half fae, half human, and Hunt Athelar. He is a fallen angel. They team up because something happened to her friends in the first book, and they need to figure out what happened and the mystery that goes along with it. This book builds on that and the second book and brings in some characters from some of Sarah's other books, and I just had such a good time seeing everybody together and this was everything I wanted. This is definitely a five-star series for me. I'm so happy that I loved it and I wasn't in the camp of people that didn't like it. But because I know a lot of people did not like this book, I do want to give an honorable mention to When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. I just read that this month and I absolutely loved it. It was so good. And if you're not into Sarah J. Mass, but still want some fantasy, I would say definitely pick that one up. When the Moon Hatched is a fast-paced fantasy romance that has dragons, mystery, tons of murder, and I just absolutely loved it. We follow an assassin for a rebel group who ends up getting captured and somebody comes and rescues her. This book is really hard to talk about because I don't want to give anything away, but you should definitely pick this one up if any of that sounds good for you. And there is dragons. There are tons of dragons and I am a huge dragon fan, so this was totally up my alley. I'm so glad I picked it up. I have the Fairy Loot Special Edition coming and I know a couple other places did special editions. Waterstones did one and I think another locked library subscription did one and that one is so pretty I really like the purple but people are selling them for so much so I don't think I'm going to be able to get my hands on them but I'm just really excited that I have the fairy loot one coming. I will say though that for that book I do know some people had trouble with the writing style. It is very flowery and verbose. It's very descriptive and it really takes a little bit of time to get into. That type of writing style is one of my favorites though so as soon as I picked it up I knew I was gonna love it. Know that going in but you should definitely check that one out. Next question is what is the best sequel that you've read in 2024? And for this question, I'm going to be talking about Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. I thought this book was so good. I tabbed it up as well. I tend to do that with books I absolutely love. I was so excited that this was coming out this year. I absolutely love this series. It is following Gabriel de Leon. He is a silver saint. He is tasked with pretty much killing all of the vampires in this world because this world is being taken over by vampires. This is a story about his quest to find the Holy Grail and in this he has actually been captured already so he is telling his story to the person who is taking it down. I highly suggest this one if you like a fantasy with vampires and lots of lots of blood and gore and crass language. This is definitely an adult fantasy. It does have like a tiny bit of romance in it but not too much. This is definitely on the out 
outskirts of my fantasy rating, but I really, really loved this one. And then the next question is, what's a new release that you haven't read yet, but want to? For me, this is Mislaid in Parts Half Known by Seanan McGuire, which is the newest book in the Wayward Children series. If you don't know what the Wayward Children series is, it's a series about children who end up finding these doors to other worlds and going through them because they're having trouble in the world that they're in now and they're looking for an escape. So those doors lead them to the escape and the world that they need in their life at the moment. This one follows Ansi. She is very good at finding things pertaining to doors. Ansi is forced to flee with a couple of her school friends and she is looking for the shop that she left last time to make sure some people are keeping their promises. This one came out in January and I still have not gotten to it yet. I don't own the Wayward Children series. I've read them all from my library, but my library still has not got a copy of this one. So I am just waiting for it to come in because I will be jumping on that the minute they get that. And I'm so excited for this one. And then the next question is, what's your most anticipated release of the second half of the year? For me, this is gonna be The Undermining of Twyla and Frank by Megan Bannon, and it's the second book in the Heart and Mercy series. I absolutely loved The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy when it came out, so I have been highly anticipating this book as soon as I heard that Megan Bannon was coming out with another one in the series. And this is a heartwarming friends to lovers fantasy rom-com. So this one follows Twyla and Frank. They are middle-aged neighbors who are also marshals in this world. But ever since the ending of Heart and Mercy, there isn't that much danger left in the world, so there's not a ton of marshalling for them to do. Unfortunately, they do find the dead body of one of their fellow marshals next to a huge footprint, and Frank inadvertently becomes the foster dad of a baby dragon. Things are amping up and they soon become entangled in a nefarious plot. But as danger closes in, their investigation becomes more complicated as does their friendship. And they start to realize that maybe their true soulmate has been living right next to them all along. This one actually has already come out by the time I have this video out. I don't know if I'll have read it yet though, because I do have the fairy loot one coming to me. I haven't actually ordered a normal copy. So if I can, I'm gonna try and get it from the library. If not, I might have to wait until my fairy loot one comes in. But this is my most anticipated book of the second half of the year. And I'm so, so excited for it. And the next question is, what's your biggest disappointment? I don't wanna harp on this one too much because I don't really like to talk about disappointing books. And I tend to not have too many disappointing books because I know what I like and I pick that up. But the one I will talk about is Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. I really had high hopes for this one because I loved the Atlas Six and I do need to continue on with that this year. But this one was right up my alley. It was a vampire, there was ghosts, there was a real estate agent that was selling a haunted house. Everything sounded like I would absolutely love it, but I slogged through it. I didn't really like the writing. This edition is really pretty and I really, really love it. It's from the bookish box, but I just couldn't get into the story. I actually almost DNF'd it and in the end I didn't, but I do think I gave it like three stars and it just was not for me, which is really disappointing because I'm still hoping that I'm gonna love the rest of the Atlas Six, but apparently this one just didn't do it for me. Although it might be your cup of tea, so definitely check it out if it sounded interesting. Again, it follows a real estate agent who is selling a haunted house. So she ends up befriending a medium who tries to get the ghost out of the house. And the medium is actually the godson of death. And they end up being pulled into this big game that they're playing. That's the best I can do with the summary because even though I read it, I still really don't know what was going on in this one. So with keeping that one short and sweet, the next question is, what's your biggest surprise? And for me, my biggest surprise was Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. But it's not for the reason you think. Allie Hazelwood is one of my favorite authors. I've loved all of the stuff I've read from her so far, but this is her YA debut and I was not expecting to love it because I don't really like YA anymore. I don't pick it up. It's just not something that I'm gravitating towards. 
but it was Ally, so I figured I'll pick it up and give it a try. I was kind of reluctant to pick it up, but at one point I was like, okay, we're just gonna pick this up and read it. So I do like chess, so that was a selling point on this one, but as soon as I picked it up, I was just immersed in this story. I couldn't put it down. I read it all in one day. I do have a couple of tabs in it, not too many, but it was just such a fun and engaging read. I couldn't put it down. In this, we follow Mallory. She was really good at chess when she was younger, but something happened and she stopped playing. But recently, she kind of got suckered into a game of chess, and unbeknownst to her, she ended up playing the best chess player in the area, or even the world, and she ends up beating him. Noah is so surprised that somebody just came in and beat him. He doesn't know who this girl is, and he needs to find out more about her. Everybody is begging Mallory to play more, but she does not want to. So she ends up getting a scholarship and she needs money for her family. So she sucks it up and she goes to study some chess. She ends up doing so well, she starts climbing the ranks and she doesn't know how to separate what happened to her and how she still loves playing this game. And as her love for the sports she so desperately wants to hate begins to rekindle, she realizes that maybe games aren't the only thing on the board. The spotlight is hotter than she imagined and her competition is fiercely attractive. So if you're on the fence about picking this one up because it is a YA and not an adult, there is some steamy scenes in this still and it was so so good. It is definitely a book from Allie. You can tell her writing right away and I highly suggest trying to pick this one up. It is kind of more new adult than YA anyway so definitely give this one a go. And the next question is, who is your favorite new author? So my favorite new author is going to be Rachel Gillig, and this is her Shepherd King duology. And this is actually all she has out right now. These are the Fairy Loot Editions. I'm so excited that I have these, and I absolutely loved this series. Rachel is supposed to be coming out with something next year that I'm also really, really excited for, and I have that on my TBR to keep an eye out for and definitely pre-order when it comes around. But this is a gothic fantasy romance about a maiden who must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom. This was such a cool magic system. It is based around tarot cards and being able to use these tarot cards to pull magic out and do certain things. The king of the kingdom is abusing the use of these tarot cards even though he claims to be trying to find them all to bring peace to the kingdom. I really don't want to spoil too much about this one because I went into it not knowing much more than that and had such a great time. I will say though that when you pick up this one, it does follow the characters from the first one, but they kind of take a back seat and some other characters that we do meet in the first one come more into play in this second one. And I really liked how the author did that. It just introduced more characters and made the world feel a little bit bigger and we get another romance in this story. So overall, I cannot wait for the next book from her. The next question is, who is your newest fictional crush? I wouldn't say I get a ton of fictional crushes other than like Resend and Rune and all of those from those fantasy romances. But for newest, I guess I would have to say that Colin from Truly Madly Deeply by Alexandria Bellaflor would be my newest fictional crush. So this book follows Truly. She is a romance author. She has just signed on to do a podcast, but that day finds out that her fiance has been cheating on her. This essentially breaks her mind and her world, and she doesn't know what to do about this. She still goes on the podcast, though, with her co-host, who is Colin. Colin is an attorney who pretty much deals with divorce cases and family law. So he has a way different view on things than she does. So in this first podcast, they end up getting into a fight and she leaves and she cannot stand him. He tracks her down a couple days later to apologize and kind of bring her back to the podcast because it's his sister's podcast and he knows he ruined it. So he wants to bring her back so that they can kind of do it again. So Truly comes back and they start hanging out a little bit more and Colin is head over heels for her. He absolutely loves her. He is obsessed with her. He will do anything that she wants even though she still despises him and is having a hard time with him. 
He just wants to show her that there are still good people in the world and he is trying everything to get her to like him too. Even though she is not reciprocating this, he is still giving her the world. Also, Truly has been told that some of the things she likes during sex aren't things that everybody else likes and Colin does not yuck her yums. He just goes with it and he's like, yes, please do this. I will definitely not stop you. They work really well together and I absolutely loved him in this. Also what was great about this is they are both bi characters and they really go into that in the book. They talk about how they don't feel necessarily like they fit in even though they do have that label. So that was nice to see in this as well. Next question is who is your newest favorite character? So for this I'm going with Nathir from A Soul to Protect. He is the Dusk Walker in this series. This is book seven of Opal Rain's Dusk Walker series, and I am absolutely obsessed with him. So this is a monster romance series where the monsters stay monstrous. I know I've talked about this before. I don't really want to spoil anything because some of this is backstory for the other books. So he has been alone most of his life and Lynn actually stumbles upon his nest and he feels a fierce urge to protect her. So far in this book, I'm actually not done with it yet, but we have got a lot of talk of personal trauma that you should definitely be aware of going into it. So check the trigger warnings. But I really like how Opal has talked through that trauma and how Nathir has been really, really careful with Lynn about how he's acting around her because he knows of her past trauma and he doesn't want to set her off. He just wants to protect her and he just has this fierce urge to be with her. She is questioning that but he is the sweetest dusk walker and he can't talk so he uses sign language which is also really interesting to see how they're communicating with that and I just love him. He is just a huge snake-like character but he is just like a little ball of like such goodness and I love him so much. Definitely check this series out if it sounds interesting to you though but all of the Duskwalkers are so sweet in their own certain way and I highly, highly suggest this series. And next question is, what's a book that made you cry? And for this, I'm going to go with Next to You by Hannah Bonham Young. I have two yellow tabs in this one, which means I cried twice during this book. Granted, I cried during a couple of the other books that I have here. I know I cried during House of Flame and Shadow. I cried during Empire of the Damned. And I actually think I even cried during Check and Mate. So this one though was so good. I did not expect to like this book as much as I did. It really got me in the feels there. This one follows Lane. She's going through a little bit of an identity crisis and she actually ends up buying a bus one day. She's going to renovate this bus into a mobile home for herself, but she has no idea how to do that. So she asks her friend Matt to help her out. Matt has been pining after Lane for so long and she just doesn't see it. But over the course of them putting this bus together, she ends up starting liking him and she doesn't think he likes her. They don't want to ruin the friendship, but things go from there. And it was such a nice story. This one also goes into a little bit of anxiety, ADHD, all of this other stuff, which was really nice to see in a book. And I really, really enjoyed this one. So pick this one up if you're just looking for a nice, sweet contemporary romance. And then next up is What's a book that made you happy? For this one, I am going to go with The Fake Mate by Lana Ferguson. Why this makes me happy is because this is Omegaverse light. You have the alpha and the beta, they're wolf shifters, and this is actually being published traditionally. So I was so excited to see that there are some Omegaverses actually really becoming mainstream. This one I got from the Aardvark book box, so thank you to them. And I was so excited to have a hardcover copy of this. I put all of my tabs in it and I will definitely be rereading this one at some point. It was just so good. 
Like I said, they are wolf shifters. This one follows Mackenzie. She is a doctor. She's just gotten out of her residency and her grandma is trying to push her to find somebody because she is the Omega in the family and she needs to be paired up. They end up having heats. So she needs somebody to take care of her. With grandma pressuring her, Mackenzie actually says that she's been dating someone and she blurts out Noah's name. He is the last person that she would ever want to date. But things come down to it and Noah actually needs to date someone as well. So they end up becoming fake mates and fake dating in this hospital setting because if he doesn't, Noah might get kicked out. Noah's been hiding his alpha status as well as Mackenzie's been hiding her omega status. She doesn't want anybody to know about it. Alphas and omegas absolutely get on and are perfect for each other. So when things come down to it, they start having this pull towards each other and they find things out. And this was just so good. But if you're looking for a fun paranormal romance, definitely pick this one up. I would highly suggest it. Next question is, what's the most beautiful book you've bought or received? So for this question, I'm actually going to talk about three books. I could not just pick one. Fairy Loot has been doing amazing books this year, and I had a hard enough time just choosing these two, as well as the third book is a book that it just actually has the regular cover on it, but I found it absolutely stunning, so I just wanted to show it off to you. So first up, I have Ruthless Vows, which is book two in the Divine Rival series. This is by Rebecca Ross, and look at how stunning this alternate dust jacket is. I absolutely love it. Then we get these beautiful stenciled edges. Even the spine is really pretty. And then underneath this is this absolutely gorgeous hardback. The black is stunning with this almost orangey kind of foil. I wouldn't say it's gold necessarily. It does have more of an orange hue to it. And then inside the book, we have this gorgeous end paper. It is on both end pages and it has that foiled little extra bit to it, which is amazing. It is also signed, which is a nice extra. Absolutely stunning. And I'm so happy that it matches my copy of Divine Rivals. And then the second really pretty book that I want to talk about is going to be Lore of the Wilds by Annalise Sabrana. This is also the Fairy Loot Edition. It has this cover that is just a different colorway from the original, but still stunning. We have this beautiful spine. We've got the back. Then these edges with the little mushrooms are so adorable. And then inside, I have some of the stuff that comes with it, but we get this beautiful hardback. It is foiled everywhere. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love that the forest is printed on it. It just really, really pops. I just love it. We have the inside end page, again with the foil on the end page. We have the back end page, even more foil. This one is signed as well. I do love that Fairy Loot does that, as well as we get an alternate dust jacket on the back of it, which is so pretty too. I can't pass up a pretty book and those were just gorgeous. And then I know I said the last one that I had is actually just the original cover for it, but I think the original cover of Heartless Hunter by Kristen Cicerelli is absolutely beautiful. This moth is stunning and it's just eye-catching. Wow. What makes this extra special for me though is even though it's a book of the month book and doesn't normally come signed, I was able to go meet the author at a signing she did by me and I was able to bring this and she signed it for me. So I have a signed book of the month edition. So happy to have this. Next question is, what's a book you need to read by the end of the year? So I really want to pick up Foxglove before the end of the year. I read Belladonna, which is the first in that series, like two years ago. I absolutely loved it. I just have not gotten around to Foxglove yet. I know Wisteria comes out in August, so what I want to do is I want to reread Belladonna, pick up Foxglove, and then pick up Wisteria. 
I am hoping to get a fairy loot copy of Wisteria since I have the two fairy loots of Belladonna and this one Foxglove. If you don't know what this series is about, it follows Signa. She is an orphan. When she was younger, Death came to collect everyone in her family and when he tried to collect her, he wasn't able to. He touched her but he was not able to take her with him. So essentially, she cannot die. So she is being passed around from family member to family member and she ends up at this new family member's house and the daughter is ill and she is just getting sicker and sicker with this mysterious illness. Death comes to collect her, but Signa doesn't want her newest family member to go. So she ends up trying to find out who this murderer is in the area. She gets help from a stable boy and things go from there. It was such a good book and I cannot wait to pick up Foxglove. And then the last question for this tag is, what's your favorite video that you've posted? For me, that's going to be my What is an Omegaverse video. I will have that link down below if you're interested, but I really spent a lot of time researching that one and I'm just really proud of how that one came out. I go through and I talk about each designation, what it means to be an alpha, a beta, and omega, what goes into the omegaverse as a whole. I give you some suggestions in it of ones that I've really loved. I do plan to have another video or two coming out where I suggest more omegaverse books. Finding the omegaverse was one of the best things that's happened to me. I absolutely love omegaverse books and I don't know where I would be as a reader if I hadn't found it. I highly suggest you looking into them if you like poly romances, why choose, everything of the sort. Omegaverse has everything in it. You can find ones that are just male female. You can find ones that everybody does everything together. It is such a good subgenre and I highly, highly suggest looking into it. But that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed my answers to these questions. And if you haven't read some of these books, definitely check them out, pick them up, tell me what you think of them. And definitely give me some of your answers to these questions down in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Bye.